Oops, Selena here. I wanted to talk today about working through a feeling of frustration. And that can be frustration with our space, frustration with ourselves, frustration with a process. This is going to be a quick lesson today because you actually don't need a lot of tool sets to work your way um, through what you feel like may be holding you back. So I just popped off of a one-to-one -one session with someone in my um, You're More Than Your Stuff program, and we took a deep dive into this. And there was a couple of points as we were discussing it, I was like, wow, I need to tell more people about this because I think it's a really prevalent thing in our decluttering journey. We get really we, we get really frustrated with maybe our space isn't progressing the way that we want it to, or maybe we have some you know, kind of like an internal struggle, some of those hard emotions that's also impeding our progress. So a quick note about frustration, frustration and anger are, there's literally, there's, first of all, I want to say there's no bad emotion. Okay. There really isn't. So frustration and anger are emotions that basically are a call to action. So what they're saying to us is something in this isn't working, something about the process, about the space, maybe it's about our boundaries, maybe it's about ways that we are or are not meeting our own needs. Um, it may be in relationships. So we get frustrated and we get angry because something needs to change. Now, the tricky part is what is that thing, right? What is it that needs to change? And we don't always have an answer. Um, it is okay to get creative in our solutions. It's okay to try various things and to see what sticks and to see what helps make it a little bit easier. Um, so there's two questions that I want you to think about asking yourself. When we get frustrated, okay, when we feel like we're spinning our wheels, when we're saying unkind things to ourselves, when we are short on patience with ourselves, maybe with our coworkers, with our family, with people we share space with, what we need to ask ourselves, the first thing is, what do I need in this moment? Okay. I talk a lot about what is the next right thing. There's essentially the same thing. So if we're feeling, if we're, you know, working on a space that we are really struggling to declutter and we're spinning our wheels and we're getting low on patience and then we have to say, okay, what do I need in this moment? Do I need to go get a drink of water? Do I need to step outside and get some fresh air? Do I need to have a nap, right? Sometimes we get overstimulated and we get overwhelmed. We just need to call it quits for a little bit and then come back to it when we feel a bit more refreshed, right? Um, do we need to ask for help? That's a big one. And that's one that, that people really struggle with. Um, the other thing we need to ask ourselves is how can I streamline this process? How can I make it easier for myself? Okay, because one of the big secrets is that it's allowed to be easy, right? You don't have to struggle. It doesn't have to be really, really hard work, pushing yourself too far, hitting burnout, getting angry. It doesn't have to be like that all the time. It's allowed to be easy. So one of the examples that I used with my client this morning was um, I go to Aquafit all the time. And there's some days, especially in the winter, it's harder for me to show up at the pool. And one of the big reasons why is that my car does not have remote start. And in the dead of winter, it's really hard to go like motivate yourself to go get wet in the pool when you're freezing because the pool's only 20 minutes away and my vehicle hasn't really had a chance to warm up. Maybe it does a little bit and then I get there and my vehicle's going to be cold again and I'm going to be sopping wet coming home. And sometimes that feels like a lot. So I say to myself, if I want to go to the pool, because it really, it's a good social connection for me. It's a way for me to move my body. And I absolutely love being in the water. So what can I do to streamline this process? How can I make it easier for myself? And one of the things that I started doing was I packed my pool bag the night before. So everything in the morning that I need to go to the pool it's packed. It's ready to go. I always have a list of what I need. So that way I don't forget anything. I don't even have to put a lot of thought into it. I check the list, put things in the bag, zip it up, leave it by the front door. So the next morning when I wake up and I'm like, oh, it's freezing outside. I don't want to have to go into my cold vehicle. 
and go to the pool, but I'm like, oh, my, my pool bag's packed. So really all I have to do is have breakfast, get dressed, grab my bag and go. So what I've done is I have removed one of the excess hurdles. I just streamlined this. I have less decisions to make. I It's going to require less energy to get out the door. So if we're thinking about decluttering and we're getting frustrated and we're feeling overwhelmed and I go, how can I make this process easier on myself? This is where the idea of zones comes into play. Okay. Instead of looking at that whole space, instead of getting frustrated of what people maybe, you know, are not helping out or it's, you know, it keeps getting recluttered. We're going to focus on small zones and we're just going to do that zone. Keep it tiny. doesn't have to be big. And then we check in with ourselves and go, okay, I did that thing. Do I want to do more? The other thing is, is that if you have a space that has a lot of clutter, and you don't know where to start, and you don't know how to break it down into zones. I want to challenge you to make a decision about three things. Walk into the space, three things that you touch, you make a decision about. Am I throwing it out? Am I donating it? Am I keeping it? Okay, and after you make those decisions about those three things, pick another three things. Okay, sometimes we get frustrated and we get caught up in this idea that we have to have the whole thing planned out we have to know all of our next steps right away and I'm here to tell you that you don't okay it's okay to not know it's okay to be overwhelmed I mean I know that overwhelm is an uncomfortable feeling but it's survivable right so you just need to show up to the space make a decision about three things or you know focus on a micro zone and then check in with yourself and go, okay, what do I need now in this moment? What's the next right thing? Do I make a decision about three more things? Do I go get a drink of water? Do I do another zone, right? If you keep attending to your space intentionally with intentional decisions and intentional energy, you will work through the clutter. And the key to keep it from building back up again is that you need to attend to the space. So you need to show back up to it and defend what you've conquered. So frustration and anger is not a negative emotion. It's telling us that something needs to change. And the two things we ask ourselves is how can I make this process easier? Right. And what do I need in this moment or what is the next right thing? Okay. If you keep checking in with yourself and if you're frustrated and say, Selena, I don't always know what the answer is, that's okay. The more that you practice asking the question, the easier it will be to find the answers. And I will see you next week. Remember that if you do need more support, you can go look at the about section and products, look for your more than your stuff, okay? And come join my program because I would love to work with you.